Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to continue to learn about the relationship between the parent class and the child class constructors. In the previous example that I shared with you I showed you how a child class constructor automatically calls the default constructor of the parent class. In this class employee I just added a add three more constructors besides the default constructor. As you can see from lines 7 through 11 that's my default constructor it takes no parameter and hard codes the ID to a value of 100 and name to a John. Then I have an overloaded constructor of employee class which takes one integer parameter and I have another overloaded that takes one string parameter and I have another overloaded one that takes one string parameter and one integer parameter. Let me fix this real quick here um, as I copy paste it. So now I have four total constructors. By default, the default constructor of the child will always call the default constructor of the parent. That's how it works always. If I go to my, my part-time employee class, as you can see, this part-time employee class will always, always call the default constructor of the parent employee class, and that default constructor will always going to assign ID a value of 100 and name always a value for John. However, if I want my part-time employee constructor to call a constructor of the parent other than the default, then I would have to use something right at the beginning on the very first line of the child because child needs to call the constructor of the parent before he does anything else within its body. That's why that call has to be right at the beginning of the constructor. Now, as you have learned a couple tutorials ago, that when a child needs to call the overridden method in the parent, we use an object reference called super. Very similarly, when a child is interested in calling a constructor in the parent class, we once again use a built-in function called super. Now, after you call a super, you now need to provide with the right set of parameter. So for example, if I pass in an ID, like a number, an integer value, then automatically the system will going to know that it needs to call the employee that takes an integer value. If I pass in super a string, then it will going to know right away to call this version of employee that takes a string. If I pass an integer as well as a string in this sequence respectively, then it will know exactly this one to call. So based on how you call your super the compiler will automatically pick which one of the three choices of the constructor to pick other than the default constructor so let's try it one at a time let me get rid of this extra line and i also got rid of this extra line that i created in my last tutorial okay so now the default value is 100 so let me do 120 just so that you can see the difference so now when I call the constructor of part-time employee class from my parent-child constructor 1.java, the employee ID should not be 100, rather it should be 120. However, the name will stay John because that's what we said. When this constructor gets called, the ID should be 120, but name should be John. So now let's test this. So when we run this program now, here is an output for employee 1 and employee 2. Let me increase the size over here so that you can see the output. Employee name John and employee ID 100. Now that is a call of EMP1. However, when EMP2 makes a call, the name is John, but the employee ID is now 120. So that shows you that we were able to call the constructor other than the default one from the child constructor. Now, let's go back and change this to a string. Instead of 120, we were going to pass Abby. So instead of John, now the name should be Abby, but the ID should be 100. So now let's run it again, and here you go. Employee name is Abby, however the employee ID is 100. Now let's go back to part-time employee, and now let's make a call of two values. Notice the sequence really matters here. There are two values, they must be passed in that sequence integer first string next otherwise it won't be able to call the right constructor so here we have we would like to pass 130 to be an employee id and let me change the name to amy and now let's run it again here so as i run it again here 
it says name Amy and employ ID 130. So here in this particular example, it's a short brief example, we were able to see how a child can call different constructors, overloaded constructors in the parent class. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Have a great day. Thank you very much.